Hey up troops! Day little to near again. Don't mind me, I was just taking shelter behind this Kiba barrier, which can only mean one thing. This time we're going to be looking at Azami. Azami is the brand new operator into Rainbow Six Siege for Year 7 Season 1 Demon Veil. And she has these things. Kiba barriers. Imagine them as sort of like throwable castle barricades, slash deployable shields, slash a load of other things, which is completely meta-changing. Now, I've been playing Siege for about two and a half years. It was the first time the Doctor's Curse event rolled around. And for me, as army is probably the biggest meta-changing operator that's been added in the time that I've been playing, certainly on defense. I've only been playing as army for a day or two. I didn't really get to play the test server much and she was only released yesterday. So I've done my best with sort of my idea of what a good setup so far. However, I guarantee you there will be more things to come and people will find better places and I will find better places. But for now, some pretty decent spots. Now, I do go on to say this in the video, but I'm going to mention it at the beginning as well. I think Ubisoft have been very, very clever with the size of the Kiba barriers when they're deployed. If you have a look at the piano window behind me, there's a little angle at the top of the window there where attackers are always going to be able to get an angle back either at the top or the bottom of the window. So just bear that in mind when you're deploying them. Now, you can get some crazy angles with these things. In fact, in this video, I was playing around on board when I was showing you a clip and I actually found an angle that you can use and you'll see that later in the video. It's insane. But I think when Ubisoft first designed this, I think they were like designed to be maybe like a castle alternative or a deployable shield alternative. But what's ended up happening is the community is using them to sort of manipulate angles and it's going to be wild in a few months time once people are used to using his army. There's going to be pixel peaks all over the place and I can't wait. We're going to follow a similar template as normal. We'll start with the loadout, then we'll get into the basics of the utility, and then we'll get into some tips and tricks, and then finally some examples. With the zombie being so new, please forgive me, this video is not as structured as the others. It's kind of a bit discombobulated. I was learning as well as sort of recording the video at the same time. So bear with me on this one. It's pretty new. However, in a couple months' time, once we've got some more fortified setups and sort of guaranteed ways of playing as army i'll do another video explaining the setups in a bit more depth but this one is a bit sort of here's a, here's a bit of information oh and then i thought we well, here's something else you can do as well so apologies it's not as structured but that's enough of me waffling on as always let's get stuck into it so let's get started talking about Azami's loadout as we always do um i personally don't think there's much of a conversation to be had here unlike other videos we've done recently azami has the 9x19 vsn which is essentially what we know as capcan's gun and she also has the acs 12 which is maestro and alibi shotgun now if you've been following the videos on the channel you'll know my feelings on shotguns on siege however this is more of a dmr really you can stick a decent size scope on it the 1.5 on this uh, on this occasion and you can um you can make decent rotates with it, like any shotgun really, but it's it's essentially a DMR. It's decent damage. Obviously, it's it's single shot, so relatively low fire rate. I am not a massive fan of it. I do know there's some pretty decent angles you can get with it. If you're any good at it, go for it. For me, it's the 9x19. You don't have much of a choice on the pistol front, unfortunately. You're going to have to go with a Deagle. And again, bar um, barbed wire or impacts, for me, it's sight dependent. I normally go impacts. If we've already got a mute or a smoke or someone playing a shotgun on the team, I'll take the barbed wire instead because we won't need the impacts. But yeah, not much of a conversation for me. Now I'm a 19, Deagle and impacts. So let's start with the Zombies gadget then, the Kiba barrier. It's applied via this, I think it's called Kiba dagger. Uh, essentially what happens is you're going to throw this at a surface once it impacts the surface there's a material inside the dagger which is going to sort of expand and create a circular type barrier um i'll demonstrate that now that then hardens up so it, the way i see it is kind of two things it's kind of a um, mobile deployable shield in a sense and also a, a castle barrier. Now these can be deployed on any surface, whether it's vertical, whether it's on a doorway, whether it's above a doorway like this, whether it's to, to block a line of sight like this, and you want to play around it. You can place it anywhere as long as it goes onto a surface and it can then expand. There are times, let me just duck under this, if you wanted to place it on a surface and there was something in the way, I did an example which I can show you here. Um, these sort of lighting conduits are going to get in the way when you try and deploy the barrier here. As you can see, it won't go around them because they're not flush with the wall. So just think about that when you're placing it. Actually, if anything, that makes a nice little head glitch over the top of there. So yeah, you can get creative with it, but that's the way they're going to deploy. 
So as I mentioned just now, there's a couple different uses for the Kiba Barrier. Now, for me, a lot of people thought when it was first released that it was going to be like a castle alternative. You can throw it at the top of a doorway like this. It's going to stop anybody walking through. Obviously, you can crouch around it. But it's going to stop people coming through doors mainly. However, I think the way it's going to be used a lot as well is kind of like a deployable shield. So you see some people playing a shield here just outside church double uh, looking towards bottom main. Um, you can place that there instead of a shield now. Granted, you can't see through it, and, you know, it's not as good as a shield, but you can peek around it like you do a shield, and you can play around it um, like you do a deployable shield. So I think they're the two best uses for it. The other thing to think about is you can also reseal things once they're open. So let's say you're playing back of armory here and somebody opens the hatch. You can throw that on the edge of the hatch, and that's going to then essentially reseal the hatch to an extent. Obviously, bear in mind, they can still come through certain areas. If I nip upstairs, I'll show you that depending where you throw it on the hatch, it doesn't always fully reseal it. So they might still be able to drop. However, they are going to be funneled um, into a certain area as they drop. So as you can see here, I can still drop here, but I'm funneled into a certain area of the hatch. You know, if you're holding it, you know you've only got to cover this area. You've not got to worry about which side they're going to drop. So you can reseal that as well. The other use that I think she's going to be good for is late on in the round when there's a push coming. You know, there's one guy left in dirt. You might be in a 1v1 situation. You know, the guy on dirt's about to peek out and peek you. But if you're here, you can just completely stop him coming out of dirt. And now he's got to hit this three times, especially with a single doorway where you can't sort of prone underneath or crouch around it. He's now got to hit this three times to open it. Uh, much like a barricade there. But if that's late on in the round, think about how strong that is. You know, you're worried someone's pushing from dirt. Chuck that over there. Well, he ain't coming out of there until he's hit that three times, and that's going to use the rest of the round's timer up. So as you've just seen, the way to get rid of the Kiba barriers is probably the main way is to melee them three times. Much like a barricade, by the time it's set, you've got to hit it once, you see the cracks start. You hit it twice, the cracks get bigger. You hit it a third time, and it breaks. It's much the same, really, in terms of mechanics as a barricade. The only difference is with a barricade, once you've punched it, you get a line of sight through it. You don't get that with the Kiba barricade. The other way of getting, main way of getting rid of it is also going to be explosives. Now, this is going to be an ash charge or a fear grenade. I'll go through some counters later on in the video, but obviously for now, I can just use an impact. Throw an impact at it, and that also destroys it as well. Just a point of note, and probably the strongest aspect of the Kiba barrier is their bulletproof. So, even though I'm melleeing that, I don't know if anyone's going, why don't you just shoot it off? You can't shoot it off. They're entirely bulletproof, and that goes to any normal sort of ballistics weapon, including Buck shotgun, DMRs, and all that sort of stuff. They can't get through it. It's entirely bulletproof. It's not even like a hatch where, you know, there's a, there's a massive amount of HP or something like that. There's none of that. It's completely and entirely bulletproof. You can put 755,000 mags into this and it will never, never break. So when placing these barriers down, the main thing that you're going to have to think about is the angle that you throw them at compared to the angle that you want the barrier to be um, sort of facing. So if you throw it at a wall that's exactly like this, perpendicular to you, the barrier is also going to be the same way. If you throw it here, it's also going to be the same way. So if you're wanting to make a barrier here to cover yourself from the trophy door, you're not going to throw it on this wall because that will then go around here and make the barrier into attic door. So you're going to have to think about the way you throw things. Like if you're here and you need to get a barrier down in a pinch, you're going to have to go all the way around to here to get the barrier down. You can see then that will go perpendicular to the wall that it's on. And then if we get rid of that, you'll see that if you throw it this way, it goes in line with the wall that it's on. That one looks bigger, but it's not. Um, so yeah, it'll go in line with the wall that it's on. There's no way you can sort of throw it around the corner to get it a different angle. It'll always go in line or flat with the wall that it's going to be thrown onto or door that it's being thrown onto or ceiling or hatch or whatever it's going to be. So whilst we've talked about his army's uses, the other thing you can think about is really getting hunkered down and making yourself a sort of really protected shell to play inside of. So we're going to use the example of upstairs here in Oregon. This particular part of the uh, the top floor is going to be a really busy area when you're defending top floor. You're going to have to watch from trophy. You're going to have to watch from uh, the breach. You're going to have to watch from top wise. You've got big window. You've got attic push maybe. So this area here is susceptible to being, you know, attacked from various different angles. So... With a couple of different Kiba barriers, you can make yourself just a sweet little bunker. So you throw one here. This means you can play like a sort of think of it like a bit like a deployable shield. You can now play around this into trophy. Oh no, well if I play here, I've got to worry about the breach. Well, don't worry about the breach. We'll throw one of those there. That covers the line of sight to the breach. I haven't got to worry about that now, but I can still peek over it if I want to, or I can play a bit further back and play trophy. 
Oh, but you might have to worry about white stairs. Don't worry about white stairs. White stairs is covered as well. So you can see from here now we've managed to cut off sort of two or three different angles, or three specifically angles. We can now play a behind this into trophy and peeking up and over if we need to. You know, we can get onto the breach. Probably hit the breach and not hit your barrier. Um, and again, onto white. Now, these are susceptible to being, you know, destroyed, but you have a couple of the ADSs here or a Wamai Magnet or two, and you've got an unbelievably strong position to cover all the angles that you need to while defending top four. I need to actually start hitting here instead of the barrier, but there you go. There's multiple sites that you can do this on around Siege, and especially to just sort of bunker yourself down, and be, you would never normally be able to play here but except behind one shield maybe here. But now, especially through the fact that you've got more Kiba barriers in your pockets, if this one gets destroyed from the breach, for example, and you're still behind this one, you're safe from trophy, you can just take a couple of steps back, no worries, we'll put another down, and then we can come back and play behind it again. And the same, you've got to watch trophy and then and then white, and then if you want to, you can go all out. And if you're worried about the big, uh, the big window push from behind Hobo there, you can be here as well and play that there. Obviously, you can peek round and and peek onto big window as well. You can basically make a sort of a really, really, really secure bunker um, and protect it with ADSs and WMIs and just hold incredibly busy area of the maps that you would never be able to do before. Sticking with the theme of sort of bunkering down, we're downstairs on bank now. Now, this is going to be your main concern. Hopefully, you can place them on an open area and cade the hatch and just try and protect that at all costs because as soon as that's open, obviously, playing here is untenable. So, what you can do, just to give you an example of what the kind of defense you can make with this army, is you can throw the barrier on the left-hand side of the bomb there, and this goes for all chassis, which will just give you a bit more protection and a wider um, sort of shield than you can still peek over that, obviously. Um, than the bomb did and then if you want to put one here as well and now bear in mind they are quite big and you don't quite realize the size of them so make sure you put them out of the way a little bit so you can put that there which will then protect you from there as well so you can peek around the side of the bomb let's uh, just shift the monitor a second you can peek around the side of the bomb around the side of the shield here and then you can move around to this one here and if you're worried that you are oh, i'm going to get peeked from the other side well don't worry about that because you can put one there as well obviously you're worried about the door you can hop up there in case a really, really strong sort of vertical, almost one-way angle there. Um, hop back, never turn your back to servers when you're defending downstairs unless you're absolutely sure it's clear because there's always some numpty in here just holding a, an angle like this waiting for you to make a mistake. Um, but yeah, there's just a couple of examples there. You can put those two barriers down. You could probably make this one a little bit better maybe to make it further over to the... Uh, to the right hand side so it's a bit stronger now, i think i went there before so if we aim for sort of there this time yeah that's much better isn't it so you can now create an angle like this peek over the bomb create the angle here you can come around this side and again you haven't got to worry too much about the door because if you get pushed from that side you can hop up here instead but there's loads of places like this on all the different maps that you can make imagine coming to this door and going yeah oh we need to get a plant down um right where are they <laughs> you know what I mean? it's so intimidating now, one thing to remember with these Kiba barriers, they can be stacked on top of each other or stacked next to each other to create a bigger barrier. Now, imagine Coastline. If you could actually play behind the bomb here with a deployable shield or even another, even another, I can't talk. Yeah, one well, for Poppycock there. Even another, <laughs> even another Kiba barrier behind the bomb here. Um, and you could hold into Aqua, that'd be incredibly strong. Obviously, you can't do that now because you're going to get domed from ruins or you're going to get someone repelling on the big window. However, one, you can block the window off by throwing a keeper barrier on the window, but that means the person repelling can actually melee it. If you put it on the pool table instead here, that's going to create a barrier from big window. But as we've discussed already, or as we'll discuss later on, sorry, there's a reason why there's always just a little bit left. I think Ubisoft have done really well with the design of the size of the Kiba barriers. You know, there's always like an angle you can get return fire from as well. However, you can stack them on top of each other. So you've got the one here. If we want to put another one up this side, that'll stack on top and create an even bigger barrier. So now we're here. We're completely covered from big window. It can't be melleed from the window. They're going to have to use utility to get rid of this. You can play behind the bomb. It's a bit dangerous from grenades, I know, but you can play behind the bomb, get a couple of ADSs down here, and if need be, you can play on the window as well. A little angle there, maybe. But now you can play in an area that was previously unplayable. This is the same across multiple places. Let's just say you want to stop a uh, um, someone peeking from the aqua balcony into billiards. You can put one on this chair here. No, you can't. You need to put it a bit higher up or a bit lower down, sorry. Just there. And then you want to can go across again to create an even bigger barrier. Now you playing behind here, or playing behind the bar, or behind this shield, 
uh, behind this barrier, sorry, makes it a bit easier. But that, just a note, that's not the best, best example. I know you're probably not going to play behind there. But that just goes to show that you can stack next to each other and they can stack on top of each other as well like this. So one thing I don't think many people have talked about yet is one of the attackers which has basically zero counters. However, I think that might be different now. We're talking about Maverick here. I'm using this reinforced wall here as an example. So we've got Maverick behind the wall here that's going to do the old Maverick. I'm going to cut a hole into the wall with the Mav Torch and nade over the top. You know, you normally see this on Clubhouse, don't you? Well, Ma Maverick's now made a hole. He's going to throw a nade through there. Well, no, he's not actually. And that completely shuts the Mav hole up again. Um, if we nip around the other side, you're going to see Maverick standing still staring at the hole because I'm controlling Maverick on a different PC. <laughs> Hi, Maverick, mate. He's not going to be moving very much. That completely seals up the Maverick hole. And I've never really thought about that before. So if I go back around this side, and I'll use the other keyboard and mouse in just a second to take control of Maverick again, the same is going to be able to be uh, said for feet holes as well. So if uh, I just go prone with Maverick now and start making feet holes, and again, this isn't the main wall that this is used on, is it? But, um, you know, it's usually Clubhouse, for example. Okay, well, we're making feet holes here to try and open that. Well, no, you're not anymore, actually. That's that gone as well. So, little line of sight. She's going to make so many lines of sight like that. So, I think there might now be a sort of a kind of a maverick counter. Now, don't forget, if that get if this wall gets mav tricked, which it still can do from the other side, um, the, the reinforcement is still going to disappear and this wall will become soft still. But for the mavericks that don't mav trick and get a little bit lazier and just throw grenades through the hole, if there's no ADS, you don't necessarily need to worry about it now. In fact, you could even time the throwing of the Kiba dagger, the Kiba barrier. So just as their nade gets thrown, it bounces back um, off the Kiba barrier, which could be a, a really interesting idea. So to give you an idea of what counters a zombie, then we'll start with Ash. Ash is breaching charge, a grenade launch, whatever you want to call it. One of those at an Azami or near an Azami barrier will also uh, destroy that. Also, just standard breaching charges can be put on front of them. It takes a little bit of a... As you can see there, it takes a bit of a wiggle to get them on. You have to go usually to the side, a bit up and down. It's, it's not just as straightforward as attaching it to them. I think it's because if it's on a surface like the, the, the Kiba barrier, sees that this like uh, marble wall behind is an unbreakable... Uh, an unbreakable aspect of the, of the wall. So you could probably squeeze it on here somewhere. But definitely where it's sort of exposed from the wall. You can pop it on there. That's the easiest way of doing it. Obviously the worry with that is when you're going to be doing that. Your toes are on show there. So just be careful of that. But obviously blow your breach and charge up. And that gets rid of that as well. So that's the ash counter side of things. All over are we? You've also got the hard breaches who can counter it. Habana especially. Just two pallets will stick to the Kiba barrier and blow that up. Much like you do a barricade, you've got to think of them similar to that. Um, as you can see that two pallets gets rid of that there. An Ace Salma will do the same. A Thermite breaching exothermic charge has to go on the part that's not attached to the wall like you saw with the breaching charge from Ash. Obviously, oh, hello, the zombie. You've also then got Zof's impact, obviously, um, and various other explosives which can get rid of it. A Gone 6. Uh, frag grenades, etc, etc. Um, think of it as a bit, if you want to destroy it, it's going to be much like a, uh, a barricade. Just obviously it's not bulletproof, that's the only difference. Another aspect of a zombie's play is something she's going to be able to do when you're hiding behind counters or angles where you're going to be susceptible from getting hit from multiple places. I'll use this here on coastline. Let's put a barrier down here. So this angle behind Sunrise Bar here is if, you st if I was to stand here and hold the, the window here, I might get shot from mud. If I was to stand here and hold mud, I might get shot from the window. Putting this barrier down now just means in this particular area, if I wanted to just hold mud, because I know that's where one person is, I can just hold this angle here. I don't have to worry about over there. You were never able to hold that angle before because you might be able to get shot from both sides. Now, you before you had to just pop up, try and get a kill. You know, you couldn't be too, too, like, too hasty. Sorry, you couldn't be too... Um, delayed in how long it took you to take the shot because you're going to get dome from the other side instead. Vice versa, if I think someone might be mud and I want to hold this side, it's no problem. I can hold this side instead. But now this gives you the opportunity to hold an angle that you were previously unable to hold because you might get a shot from um, two different sides. There's loads of different places where this is relevant as well, like behind the bakery counter on cafe, on rafters, on clubhouse, a couple of different examples. But now I only have to worry about one angle at a time and I can hold both sides. So, please don't show anyone what I'm about to show you, because if I die to a spawn peak in this fashion, I'll be so sad. <laughs> um, this one was actually discovered by Combat Carrot. I think it was yesterday when I was watching him on stream. Um, he's on Twitch, and he, he puts content on YouTube as well, so check him out over there. Um, but what he did is he threw a Kiba barrier to the side of the uh, to the door. It only works with single windows like this. 
Um, you can throw it just to the side here. Uh, about halfway up and it'll create a really tiny angle in the bottom corner of the window so if you throw it this side the angle is going to be down here if you throw it this side the angle is going to be down here so we'll throw it this side um, and i'll show you what i mean so yeah fire it about halfway up just slightly to the right of the yellow barricade pop that there and the angle that it gives you underneath is an absolute shambles obviously you can see all the way around there but if you're looking straight on there the angle there is so, so, so good. It's, I mean, I'm, if I die to a spawn peak like that, I'm going to blame you guys because you must have told somebody. So we've been through how you can make a nice angle on a single window. Now we're going to talk about a double window. So you want to put one uh, keeper barrier on the right-hand side and quite simply another one on the left-hand side in a similar place. Where the two meet is going to leave a tiny angle underneath between the two barriers that you can peek. If you can place the two um, daggers closer to each other as well, it's going to make this even tighter. Um, but what I've tried doing is opening the left-hand side of the uh, of the prep wall. Obviously, this one remains reinforced. Opening the left-hand side and just holding this door here. Um, obviously, you're gonna you can get shot from here yourself, and it's just your face through this angle. So if anyone gets one stray bullet in this area, you're a goner. So just use it to your advantage. Uh, what I will say is because everything around the prep area is already sort of metal and grey. If you're an attacker and you have a quick look through here as you're coming through the door, it doesn't look like there's an angle there that much. You know, it's not that easy to see. Um, when you get closer, it's a bit more obvious. But yeah, I mean, imagine coming through prep and you think it's clear. And on the kill cam, you get domed from an army holding this angle. <laughs> I'd be raging. <laughs> so we're upstairs on board now, and this isn't necessarily unique to this site, but I'm going to use this site as the example. So the East Take is quite popular on border these days. You've got the balcony here, the window here, and if you can get this wall open, you can plant behind the bomb so easily. However, a real problem with holding it is this wall here. Now, you never want to reinforce this wall because that means the only place you can contest from is from the doorway. However, I think with the introduction of a zombie now, you could place where one of her barriers here. And you can now play around this. Let's just get out and um, destroy that there and destroy this here. And obviously, as we've been through a million times, the bulletproof. You can even get angles down underneath. You can make a... Uh, be careful just to punch the, um, the, the wood and not the... The army barrier. So you could even get an angle. I mean, look at that. That's absolutely disgusting. I've just seen that for the first time. That's absolutely disgusting. <laughs> um, so you can get, like, you're protected here. You haven't got to just play behind a soft wall and get wall banged. But you can peek over it if you need to. You can even get an angle onto the, uh, the uh, balcony window there. But, I mean, I've just found that myself. You, you were witness to it. That is bang out of order, isn't it? Like I keep saying, imagine you're on the, the top of the balcony and you just get one tap from there. You see the kill cam and you think, what? Um, I mean, the opposite way looking back there. I mean, you're not... Oh, God, you can't even see that. <laughs> right, we just discovered that. Don't tell your friends about that. I'm keeping that one for myself. So anyway, my point is, you can't reinforce this wall because it gives the attackers too much control. Now you can place a, a keeper barricade here and you can play around it and probably do the most disgusting angle I've seen for a long time down at the bottom here. This isn't completely unique to border. There are other sites where you can put keeper barriers on softball. You could do the same here. You could do the same over here. You know, it's not completely unique to this site. I just think this is probably the best example of where you need a protect bit of protection behind a softball, but you don't want to fully reinforce it. So there we have it. That's a Zami. I said it at the beginning. I'll say it again. Probably the biggest meta changing operator, certainly on defense since I've been playing Siege for two and a half years. If you're wondering who that is on attack, I think Ace was the biggest meta change in operator on attack whilst I've been playing. I genuinely can't wait to see what angles the community comes up with whilst playing as army. I think it's going to be a bit of a frustrating time because you're going to die from angles you didn't even know existed. However, learn from it. Use those angles when you're defending and playing as army and you can get those kills as well. Again, I've done a army because somebody requested it. If you want an operator doing that hasn't already been done, get it in the comments below and I'll add it to the list. For those of you that don't know, I stream on Twitch four days a week, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 p.m. UK time. All we do is play ranked. I normally end up getting my arse handed to me, but come and check it out. So there we go. Welcome to Year 7 Season 1. Welcome to Azami, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.